Rufur Suleima for Hannah Bat Miriam, also my grandmother Burkhobat Sara. Rabotai, we are going to continue the halachot of Kibbutz Avim and Be'ezrat Hashem, two pieces on the advice of how a person has to be able to break his gava. Because, like we know, Rabotai, there is nothing what to be holy about in this world, like we saw yesterday. If it's with the clothing, if it's with the houses, if it's with the cars, the watches, all these Rabotai. In the end, will not escort you. It won't even stand by you in the day of din. The first halacha here that he wants to bring down when it comes to halachot of kibud avim. All this time we've been speaking about to what extent a, fa- uh, a child has to serve his mother and his father. Today we want to speak about money, rabotai. Who pays? Your father wants something. Who pays? Does your father pay or does the son pay? And what happens if Chas Shalom, the father or the mother, do not have the money and they ask the son to take care of the bill? Is he obligated to take care of the bill? This that we have stated in the previous halachot that a person has an obligation to feed his parents, to give them drink, to dress them, to cover them. He has a lot of obligations. Also, yesterday we saw that a person has an obligation to clean the parents' house, etc. Call the humikapspo shell of all this is from your father's money. If you want you to buy something, you ask him for the credit card, and you go and you buy it or cash, whatever it is, and you buy it. This is only on the condition im yesh lo. If the father has money, you use the father's money. You're not obligated to use your own money. Ela rather shaben tarich letroch beguvul ma'anam rabotai. However, the son has every obligation with his body to burden, meaning to work for his parents, for their sake. With his body, has the full obligation. It never leaves him. Only by the money we're going to say, if the father has, then you're going to use your father's money, but not your money. Aval ena ben chayav lo tzi chutzot mikasbo kedel achil ol hashkod v'al albish et horav. The child is not obligated to take out from his pocket money in order to be able to feed the parents, to drink, to give them drink, and to dress them, etc. That is halakha if the parents, Baruch Hashem, are working, everything is fine, they have what they need. What happens about Taif Chasrushan, the parents don't have, either they lost their job, or they are on pension, Chasrushan. And they're not making enough and they're not getting their bills covered, etc. What's going to be the halacha over there? If the father does not have enough money to pay for food and drink and similar things to that, and let's say Baruch Hashem, the son is making money. Rabotai, listen to this carefully. We force the son. Bent in the court is able, the Jewish court is able to force the son. We're going to force the son and we're going to tell him that he has to pay up according to the wealth, but from the halachot of tzedakah. Before I continue, about time, Masechet Kiddushin, it says, when do we say halachically this is the halacha, but Masechet Kiddushin says, when do we say you are a father, a child is allowed to use his, his own money from tzedakah in order to be able to take care of, of his father and his mother? That's only if the father doesn't have and the son doesn't have. It really doesn't make that difference. In my second Kiddushan, it says if the son has and he's using his 10% or 20% to use it for his parents, over there one of the Tanim bring down that he should be cursed about that. Why? Because if you're making 50, 60, 80, 100,000 dollars a month, or if you're making 300,000 dollars a year, or any time, and you have Rabotai, why are you stealing from the poor or from Tamdi Chachamim using that money for your parents? Allah, Rabotai, he says over here clearly that a child is going to be allowed to use his, uh, the Maser money that he has to give to all the needy people. He'll be able to use that money to be able to pay for his parents. Food, drink, etc., like we mentioned. So, therefore, Rabotai, if the father doesn't have and the son has, does he have to pay from his own pocket? 
Over here, the halach of Yaakov Yosef Paskins, he does not have to. If he makes 100,000 and he has to give 10,000 to Tzedakah, or if he has to give one fifth, 20%, instead of giving it out to the world, Rabotai, make sure you first take care of your parents if they do not have. Ah, however, Rabotai, Eno Chayav Lechazel Al Petachim Kedel Esov Tzedakah Bishvil Levanet Tzedaviv Emo. However, he says, the child is not obligated right now. What happens if the child, Rabotai Chasosholom, does not have? He's not obligated right now to go back from door to door in order to collect charity for the sake of his mother and his father to be able to sustain them. Or to take loans on behalf of his father, the child is not obligated to do that. But rather... The obligation falls only on your body, Artur. You have to serve your father and your mother with your body, with all your bodily needs, and you have to be able to serve them at all times. He brings that over in parentheses, and there are those that say, Rabotai, nevertheless, even though the halacha does not require of you to go begging or to taking loans when it comes to your parents, but since the mitzvah of honoring your mother and your father is very great, he says a person is correct that a person should try to do everything that's possible in order to be able to feed his parents, give them drink, clothe them, etc. Even if you have to beg from door to door, he says it's worth it to do it for your parents. In order to sustain his father. He says, Ekev kibud aviv rabotai v'chas v'shalom If parents ask you to do something and in that time you're at work and if you're going to do what your parents say you're going to get fired. He says, Be'ezrat Hashem b'lineder We will see this later on. Rabotai, that was Allah when it comes to kibud aviv and we are continuing in Shavad Musar in the middle of Ga'ava. How does a person look that he shouldn't be prideful he shouldn't be haughty what does he have to do? He says, Shalishit, a person, the third thing a person should do, besides what we said yesterday, that a person should look at the clothing, the, the bricks, the metal that he's putting on himself, that he's honoring himself, Rabotai, when you're doing that, you're making these things much more better and much more important than you. That means you're saying that the worm is better than you because silk is made from it, that a sheep is better than you because wool is made from it, that plants are better than you which have no speech, nothing. They don't even have a life. Rabotai are better than you. And metal and rocks and all these things that we glorify ourselves with. All this Rabotai is to you. You're wasting your time. So that's what he says. You have to remember Rabotai. We're in this world. Not to Chasro Shalom build our honor. Our Rabbi, why, why are we in this world? We're in this world only for one reason. And that's to build the honor of Hashem. We have to give honor to the person that it belongs to. And that is HaKadosh Baruch Hu, And not ourselves. So he says over here, the third rule is like this, Rabotai, sim negedenecha, you should put before your eyes. Shalo ta'amod be'yofiecha u'bekochecha kol ha'yemim asher ta'a chai al adama. Rabotai, do not live based off, do not be hoary, do not be prideful because of your beauty and because of your strength as long as you are alive in this world. Why? U'bovo yimei hazik, now listen to this carefully, when the days of old, when you're going to become old, Rabotai, you're not going to be able to be any more holy. Impossible. Rabotai, do you know the problem is when a person is young, he has, he has everything, correct? But when he starts hitting 60, 70, 80, he becomes old. His skin wrinkles. He can no longer do whatever he wants to do. He can't eat as much as he wants. He can't sleep as much as he wants. Rabotai, a person at one point in his life, he was showing off. I have everything. The same people, when they're going to realize you, when you're going to be old, you're going to be laughing stock. Why? Because why aren't you showing off now? Why aren't you driving your Bentley at 80 miles an hour now? Why aren't you doing the things that you, where's your, where's your house that you built? The big house. When you're walking like this and nobody's showing you honor. Where is it, Rabotai? Do not honor yourself with your beauty and with your houses and everything else that I'm time with your strength. Because in the end of days, everything is going to be taken away from you and you can have no control over it. That's what I'm about time. 
women, Rabotai, should know very much. Also today, boys, unfortunately, you know the way we act, the way we dress, the way we talk to adults, we have no more respect. Rabotai, girls today, the way they dress, they want to show off their skin. Rabotai, Hashem, Yerachem, this skin, the way it's going to age, at the, at, the, at the speed that it's going to age, it's not going to be funny. With all the Botox, Shmotox, Koltox, I don't know what they do, Rabotai. In the end, it will not help you. When the time comes, that Rabotai person gets old, they're going to say, was this the girl that was at one point beautiful walking around in her mini skirt, and today she could barely even walk. She has a wheelchair on, skin with a wrinkled. Rabotai, the skin was not given for other men. The skin was given for her husband alone. Her beauty is for her husband and nobody else. And this is what women need to understand. When they're showing off their skin, Rabotai, it's the Isur do Oraita that they're causing every single second when they have other men looking at them. And remember, Rabotai, speak to your wives, educate your wives about the importance of not dressing up like that. Rabotai, one more point of view bring, brings down. Not to be hori. Hashem bedatech, Rabotai, think in your mind. Your ways are like an animal. When the time when you need to use your bowels, when you have to make number one, number two, you behave like an animal. What's there to be prideful, Arthur? What are, you, what are we priding ourselves about today? A body that takes everything that botai and in the end it makes it into excrement. So what's there to be happy about? What's there to be happy about already? Uh, is there a place for such a person that behaves like an animal because Rabotai, the way we eat sometimes we eat like animals well, the way we are with our wives we behave like animals the way we make number one, number two we're like animals so why, what are we prideful? these animals are better than you if they want they'll eat your life in a second Rabotai, that's why Rabbi Walken Shlita the father used to always tell me when I was just becoming Baal Teshuvah a lot of people, they look at the outside world, Artur. A lot of people look at the outside world and they're very, they're very amazed by what's going on. This one is building a building. This one's building a house. This one is building a car. He's building this. Everybody's amazed. This one is putting diamonds on his watch. This one is making, eating in the smokes bar from morning till night. You know, he's eating. My father one time told me there, there was a guy. It was unbelievable. There was a guy who was in a, in a restaurant. So he has... Listen to you. Have smokes bar. After you finish smokes bar, you have the main meal. After you have the main meal, you have the dessert table. Ila. So what do you do? You and then after the second, after the dessert, you have plof, the shabbat brachot, whatever they have, right? Ah, uh, yeah, ishki. Thank you, Marik John. Do you know what? <laughs> Artur, listen to this carefully. So they 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 took out chorovok. You know chorovok? Whatever this thing people like to say. Delicatess. Because this guy, he filled himself so much, he really didn't know what to do. Because wow. Chorwa, but he really wanted, he didn't know what to do. He had to go to the bath, he put his finger inside his mouth, he threw up just to eat Chorwa. Right. That's how low we are, Rabotai. We're living in this life, in this world, just to eat Rabotai. We're not living. <laughs> you know, some people eat to live, some people live to eat. Rabotai, I'm telling you, Rabbi Walker told me, beautiful Peshat. Do not look at these people, you know why? In the end, all the money that they pump into their body with all the expensive food, in the end, Artur is going to one place. Everybody's is going to one place. Toilet. You flush it down and Shabbat Shalom. So what did you go? So what did you do? I'm serious. So the Chachamim tells, I forgot who brings it down. One of the Rishonim, he says, where's the whole Ana'ah? Where's the whole enjoyment in eating? It's only a fleeting pleasure over in the, in the throat. Once it goes down, when the food goes down, that's when you feel good. But once it gets into your stomach and you overblow it, oh, I can't do this no more. It's not for me. I'm not going to eat. I'm going to go on a diet. That's it. That's for me, right? <laughs> Rabotai, because that's how foolish we are. We believe that food and all these things make us happy. Rabotai, once again, these things will never make you happy. These things are only good to sustain you in order for you to be able to serve Hashem. That's why Rabotai, when a person eats, when a person sleeps, he has to say, I'm eating in order to serve Hashem. I'm sleeping in order to serve Hashem. I'm working in order to serve Hashem. In that case, you get a mitzvah for everything you do. Every little time, every little second you sleep, you get a mitzvah. Every second that you eat, you get a mitzvah. Every second that you work, you get a mitzvah. Why? Because who are you doing it for, Rab? You're doing it for Hashem. Everything is about Hashem and nothing is about us. Baruch Adonai Amen. 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 Amen.